Hello and welcome to Health Talk. I'm Dr. Manny. With conflict continually brewing in the Middle East, as a doctor, I have to wonder what are some of the healthcare problems that are striking that particular region. Here with an update is Dr. Abdullah Alkan, who's Director of Maternal Fetal Medicine at Hackensack University Medical Center and also is a health consultant to the Middle East. A couple of weeks you were here, you were giving us some update of what was going on when the conflicts, conflicts began in the Middle East, especially in Bahrain. Um, a lot of concern I continue to have about the healthcare system. Recently, also in Bahrain, there was a big demonstration. Uh, how were the hospitals functioning? Well, initially the hospitals were functioning very well. Uh, but as the crisis grew, the hospitals were now no longer functioning as true hospitals, but was a, a site where a lot of uh, uh, patients, uh, hostages, uh, foreigners were just put in the, in the hospital for illegitimate reasons. Basically it was chaos then. Oh, absolutely. It was absolutely chaos and this is why the government had to intervene at some point. Uh, there was good health care access but then ultimately things started deteriorating at especially one hospital which was the major academic hospital in Bahrain. You know, typical, uh, you know, physicians, nurses, people that work in healthcare systems are apolitical. Do you find that to be the case in the Middle East? Do you, you, you see the healthcare providers are uh, sort of saying, listen, we're here to provide healthcare, but don't get us involved in the revolution? Well, I mean, that's exactly what should happen. Right. Doctors should be apolitical. But during the, as the, uh, the, the level of tension grew, a lot of the opposition leaders kind of took physicians on their side and kind of brainwashed them so that they could become political as opposed to apolitical. And this is why the hospital no longer became a, a, a healthy site in terms of taking care of patients. It became a, a hostile environment and patients were not getting adequate care. care. Okay. So what does that do to the general population? Because there's still people that need elective surgery, people that need, um, you know, interventional, you know, cancer patients need radiation therapy. I mean, you name it. So is that all broken now? It is, sure. Now it's broken uh, because the government decided to intervene and they took over the, uh, the hospital and they kind of stripped uh, individuals who were acting as political barriers and prohibiting patients from coming in and receiving adequate health care. Okay, so, you know, I, I mean, I remember uh, a couple of years ago I visited Bahrain with, with you, as a matter of fact, and I, I was at all uh, at what I was seeing as so far as, you know, the hospitals had plenty of supply, people were waiting for appointments. I mean, it just ran like a normal civilized society. If I, went to, if I were to go today to Bahrain, what would I see? Well, I think you'll probably see the same thing right now. Okay. If you were there probably a couple of weeks ago, not the case. But I think right now there's a little bit more order at the hospital. Okay. And, and let me take that question a little bit further because I, I know you can't project, but you know, what, what am I supposed to be expecting in, in the next few months? The biggest problem, Manny, is, is if the political problem in Bahrain becomes a more and more of a sectarial problem, I think that's going to lead to more, a civil war. And of course, with any kind of war, you're going to have more casualties, more injuries. And with that, you're going to have hospitals overloaded with patients. You're going to be running out of supplies. And that's normal. And that will, will happen should this war escalate. Okay. So, you know, now let's say uh, I'm going to put my, uh, my, uh, my army doctor hat on. Uh, if you look at groups like, let's say, uh, Doctors Without Borders, uh, I recently saw that the Kuwaiti uh, government, uh, through the, you know, the union that you all have in that region, were sending doctors. Um, can these, is that happening? Do you think that that is something that is needed at this point in time? I think so. You know, you, you, know, you have to, you see, if you look at Bahrain, it's a very small island. And uh, we have hospitals with a good health care system. But a lot of physicians, unfortunately, at the major academic center were taking political views and were not providing adequate health care, which they're supposed to. You know, there's an oath that we take as doctors right. to provide health care to patients irrespective of race, age, gender, uh, religious background, so forth and so on. So right now, uh, some of those individuals have either resigned, have left the hospitals, uh, or... Uh, in prison because of what they have done un unethically. Uh, so the government is asking for help and aid from other GCC states and of course Kuwait and other countries in the Gulf have uh, are providing uh, nurses and doctors to the region. So what should America know? What can we tell them? 
Well, I think what America should know, number one, is they have to, first of all, pay a little careful attention to what they're hearing from different channels and different medias, because a, a lot of truth is not being uh, conveyed to the American uh, public over here, in, in, in especially the United States and European countries. That's number one. Number two, what they have to know is Bahrain is a peaceful country. We are people who've never differentiated between uh, Shias, Sunnas, Christian, Jews. We all lived together, uh, um, you know, peacefully. Uh, now, opposition leaders have come in. They've made this a political agenda. They have not achieved their political agenda, which is overthrowing the royal family. So now they're making this a, sect a, a, a sectarian problem. And with this, unfortunately, if this on continues and it does not stop, and I hope people can the Bahrainis will stand together and say, look, we will not have opposition leaders because they have personal vendettas destroy our children and our children's children. I think the country will go downhill. So I think it's about time that the Bahrainis get together, uh, understand the truth about what's happening, and the Americans understand the truth of what really is the fundamental problem in the region, and that is fundamentalism. Uh, religious fundamentalism, political fundamentalism, and inability for these uh, extremists to sit together and have a national or an international dialogue. I thank you for coming to the program and clearing a lot of things and hopefully you'll come back again and you keep us updated because this is a topic that's not going to go away and everybody has to be aware of what's going on there. So thank you so much. And if you have any health questions, you can email them here at fox at drmanny at foxnews.com. Thanks for watching. For Fox News, I'm Dr. Manny.